Hey, what's up coaches? Welcome back to the channel. Today I feature a very special guest. We have Christy Hilly. She is an amazing business owner. She started a three-on-three -three basketball league back in the 90s. Uh, she's generated over seven figures within her league business. Today she's going to teach you how she got started, um, how she got up and running with this business, the mistakes that she made, um, all the things that she has done to create a successful career in this niche. And she also has a free webinar. So if you go right below this video, she teaches business owners all over the world now who are thinking about either starting or growing a three on three business. So you can either click on the link. Uh, it's a webinar. You can go watch it. It's awesome. I've gone through it. Um, and she also has a link right below that where you can get on a call with her. You can chat with her ask her questions, learn more about um, starting this type of business. It's a very lucrative business. She has done obviously very well. So she's going to share her story. So I'll stop talking so you can listen to her. All right. So let's just try to take it back to, I guess, the 90s, right? That's when <laughs> the 90s. Yeah, that's when you started this business. And one thing I'm really curious about, and I know everybody else is, is how in the world did you first get into the three on three business, especially back then? Yeah. Well, first of all, it was not an intentional business. Like we weren't going about this as a business at all. So my husband and I were pretty new into our teaching careers and coaching careers. I coached volleyball, he coached basketball, and we were just looking for a way to get the kids to stay in volleyball and basketball in the summer and, and have fun with it and keep them loving the sport and um, getting better as well. And we just were talking to the kids that we had as that we were coaching and kids in our classes and saying, what do you guys, what would be fun? And actually the, the, the start of it was to try to do this with volleyball, to mm -hmm. try to do smaller side volleyball games, but that didn't work as well because for volleyball, you need equipment, you need bigger space. Running a 20 minute volleyball ball game is not enough time. Whereas a 20 minute running time basketball half court, that's, that's enough. Kids get tired mm -hmm. with that. So it ended up working out really well for basketball. And again, we just talked to the kids and said, what would be fun? And they're like, we just want to play with our friends. We don't want to have coaches yelling at us. We, you know, don't care so much about prizes and things. We just want to come have some music playing and it just kind of evolved that way. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, this wasn't a business when we started. It was just as teachers and coaches, you do things for the, the kids to grow your program and open up the gym and let them come. And I think the first year we had about 32 teams, if I remember correctly, and wow. we thought they were great. This is fun. We've got 32 teams. And, and what happened was like then word of mouth the next year, it was bigger. And I think the third year we went over a hundred teams and people were driving as far as like an hour away to come to this league. Wow. And yeah. And it just, it had just kind of snowballed from there. Uh, uh, took a few years, but finally some people started asking us, will you come and run a league like this in our community? And we're like, sure, I guess we could do that. And then as that kept happening, we just were getting so busy running three on three leagues that we had to kind of switch and say, wait a minute, this is a business now. This can't mm -hmm. just be, we're doing this for fun and out of the goodness of our hearts and things like that. So um, yeah, that's kind of how it all started. Very cool. And how many leagues have you run to date? I actually don't know the exact number, um, but for many years, it was just this one league. And then we had a handful of leagues. Um, when we got intentional about this and said, this is going to be a business. I think that next year we went from like five leagues to like 12 or 15 leagues or something. I like just want a huge jump. when we said, this wow. is going to be a business. Um, we currently are running 36 or 37 leagues this year in the Minneapolis, Minnesota area. Um, I, I think we're over 350 leagues in total in our wow. history. That's amazing. And kind of going back when you guys made it like a legit business, what, what were some of the obstacles that you ran into, I guess, during that time? Cause I know going from something that you're like passionate about to a business, like things change. 
Uh, but what were some of those initial obstacles that you guys faced at the beginning of the business? Well, there's probably a lot of them. I think, first of all, just the, the mindset for us, I think a lot of maybe your listeners are going to agree to this. When you're a coach and you're a teacher, it's you're, you're passionate about it and you're not necessarily always doing it for money. You just mm. love it so much and you love to help the yep. kids and you want to give them a great experience. So that mindset of, okay, now we're doing this and we have to think business wise. And we had no business background whatsoever, you know, like, so that, that was a challenge for us is like, how do we think like business people? How do we set up a business? Mm -hmm. um, and as we were expanding, we, and, and running more and more leagues, we really had to have a system so we could be efficient. You know, mm -hmm. if you're running one league or two leagues, you can be inefficient, I guess, and still manage it. But when we started getting into the, we're running 20 leagues a year, we better have a system in place so that things are efficient and we can and do a good job at what we're doing and not lose our minds. So just creating that system, that program of how things are going to run so that we can keep expanding and scaling. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just being willing to change, I think is a challenge because when we first started there, really people weren't using the internet. We didn't have a website. Mm -hmm. Like when we would put out our schedule, we would call people and have to leave a message on their answering machine and say your game's at seven o'clock and seven thirty, wow. and that's how we started. <laughs> that's old school. <laughs> I know, and people would write their registration on a paper form and give us a check and and mail it to us, and mm -hmm. um, just being willing to change and say, okay, um, this is how we've always done something, but we need to now do an online registration. We need to create a website, uh, you know, like even things like using social media that didn't exist. And you mm -hmm. just have to be willing to change and evolve and, and take those challenges on. Mm -hmm. Right. And let's kind of go into it. So if you're running 20 leagues in one year, how, how many moving pieces are there? Like, cause I know it's you and your husband, but like who else is involved in that? Okay. So after we decided to make this a business, my husband left teaching and coaching to focus on this full time. And I'm still, I'm still full time. Well, I'm part-time teacher right now, but I was still full-time teacher. Um, we did that for a while and we could manage with him being full-time, me being uh, full-time teaching and working on the business. But then a few years into it, then we did hire our first full-time staff member who then we took another big jump and we added like another seven or eight leagues because we had that that mm -hmm. next person helping. Um, so those are like the main people we have, but then you've also got to manage. We can't obviously be at all of the leagues that we're running. Right. So we have to have people that we trust to go in and be the site director for the different leagues. And um, so we had to develop some training to make sure that those people are out there running our, our events the way we want them to be done. And um, mm. yeah, so those are kind of the main people. And then obviously staffing the league with, officials is mm -hmm. another piece of that right so you have the site director and i guess they manage the refs mm -hmm. and then everyone registers online through y'all's website so mm -hmm. you guys have that system like just rolling um and i know one of the questions that people have asked me this is before you and i ever got connected they would be like ben you know <laughs> how do you start a three on three business? And I would just be like, I mean, I don't know, like <laughs> I, it, that's not something I'm, I'm an expert at because I I've been involved with three on three businesses, but I haven't like started one. Um, but people have asked me that all the time. And like now with your experiences, you're, you're helping a lot of people start and grow three on three businesses. Uh, what do you find is like kind of the most challenging thing for someone who's starting that, Maybe they're asking you if, if they're beginning your help or just, you know, what's something that you feel like these people need to break through with at the very beginning of starting the business? It's going to vary depending on what their experience is um, coming into it. So, um, you know, just do you have a business to begin with? Do you need to start up a business? Some people mm -hmm. just need some help with how do I even get a business registered and mm -hmm do those things. A lot of people are coming into this. They have some sort of basketball business or sports business, and they want to add this. So they're maybe a step ahead now. And, and they're looking at more like, how do I promote? How do I get people to sign up for this event? 
Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's a big thing. And then I think the biggest thing is that you don't know what you don't know. So like these people that are like, Oh, I can, I can run a league and they've got a lot of pieces to make it happen. And a lot of skills and knowledge, but they don't necessarily know what they don't know. And they're going down the path and then they're in hindsight saying, Oh shoot, I should have done this first. Or Mm -hmm. so I think just the, the timeline of, all the tasks that need to, to be done and when you should be working on which thing is, is a challenge for people the first time they're going through this. And that's what I'm trying to help people with. Um, we just really had a lot of people start reaching out to us maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago and saying, how, how are you guys doing this? And I, I had no way to help people. I was really, I didn't have the time. I didn't have any, mm-hmm. I couldn't talk one-on-one that wouldn't have been enough. And so, yeah, then I just had to really think about how can I help people? I'm a teacher and what we're doing here can be done by other people if they know what to do. And so that's right. really where I've wanted to spend my time the last few years is helping people get on the right path to, to be successful with this. Right, right. And that's, that's awesome because, I mean, as you know, like a lot of people who start businesses, they, they don't know what they don't know. And if they had the right help, they can avoid so many problems and like, they'll just stay away from a lot of mistakes that they would normally make if they were doing it on their own, just finding out all the problems on the go. And, and, and I used to kind of be that way when I started my businesses, I would just kind of wing it. And once I got around my first mentor, I realized like, no, you can't you can't run a real business that way. You can't just like wake up and figure it out. It's like, you need a plan and you need to execute on that plan. Um, And how how important, because I know this is something you and I talked about maybe a couple of weeks ago, but how important is it for someone who's starting this type of business, as far as like being connected locally with other parents and, and kids, like if, if someone is, not connected at all, like how much more difficult is this business for them initially? Um, I think that adds a a challenge to it for sure. Um, It just really depends on what you're willing to do too. So, um, you know, I'm working with somebody who wasn't super connected with the basketball world, um, an entrepreneur, and he has just thrown himself into this. He's volunteer coaching. He's running like, um, basketball clinics and things. Now he has over a thousand people or he has like 1200 people on his um, email list when he started with zero and he had no basketball people on his list. And so he's found ways to just get out there and connect himself to the right people to get them on his list. And he's, he's run six leagues, I think, since he started. And Uh, that's awesome. And he did start with really nothing. So it, it, it depends on what you're willing to put into it. Right. And I love that because it, A lot of people think that, you know, if I'm going to start something, I have to have contacts. And the reality is like, everybody kind of starts at the same spot, which is zero clients. And it's, you know, what are you willing to do to get in front of people and volunteering, coaching? Like, I I think it's so possible for anyone to build an email list like that, like pretty quickly, depending on the, the level of effort that they put into it. And I know just with the, the setup that you guys have, obviously you guys have like sponsors and t-shirts, like you, you have everything set up. Um, but what is, if you had to kind of just dial it in, what is like the number one, I guess, marketing tactic that you guys use to get parents to sign up? Is it flyers? Is it just word of mouth? Like what, what's like the number one way you guys are building these leagues? Um, I think I would probably say email because mm-hmm. we control, you know, when the that list. goes out to people, right. Not whether they open it or not, but you know, when they might not see a social media post if we do right. social media, um, because we're established though, and, and we're serving 14, 15,000 kids every year. I think our biggest thing is the word of mouth. So kids come to our league, they have a great time. They're out in 
doing their daily life. They're wearing our shirts. They're at basketball camps and they're talking about this. This league was super fun. I think we get more from that. We make sure that they have a fantastic experience. We run that league. It's organized. It, it, people love it. Now the next year you're going to grow it and grow it. And like I said, our first league, we had 32 teams and a couple of years later we had over a hundred. So I think that that is not because we're emailing our flyers. It's because we put out a good product yep. and that, that does the work for us. Yep. Good products always win. And, and I like what you talked about with the emails because that is something like you, when you own that information, you're in direct control of how often people see your marketing message. Um, Cause I know with social media, even if you have a big following, they're going to limit what people see. Not everyone's going to see it uh, but with an email that's going to hit everybody same day, same time, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. which is amazing. And I know this is something I kind of just thought of. Cause like I've seen coaches that I've talked to that have tried to do leagues and people do it different ways to where like, in the league, there's like a, a championship and there's one team that wins. And then some people do it to where like, they're not really keeping score. They're not keeping, you know, track of who wins every game. How do you guys set that up? I love that question. Um, okay. So when we first started out, we, we were coming into this with our, we were high level collegiate athletes. We were very competitive. We had the mindset of, everybody is like this. They want to be in a tournament. They want to win right. something. They want to see the standings. That's how we ran our first league. We kept standings. We posted it. We, um, the last night we would run a tournament and we thought that was amazing. We thought that was great, but what we found we were dealing with was people calling us they couldn't email us back then. We didn't have email. <laughs> um, they're calling us and saying the scores were wrong. The ref reported it wrong. The standings are wrong. Well, that team had someone that wasn't on their roster and that kid's a grade older and you didn't do the brackets right. And we're like, this is not what we want to be focusing our, our time on. This is ridiculous. Like, mm -hmm. and then I think it was maybe about three years in, I said, Mike, what if we didn't have a tournament? It's like, what? Like, yeah, what if we didn't have a tournament? All this could go away. People wouldn't have to worry about what the record is. And let's just focus on the kids coming here. They know who won the game, but then right. it's not posted anywhere and there's no prizes. And what that did, it just removed all that ridiculous stuff that we had to, to deal with. And just the tone in the gym just comes down because mm -hmm. nobody's getting a prize and you're just literally playing basketball for fun. And so um, we did, we chuckle about this. We probably did have a few people say to us, where's the tournament? We want the tournament. Those were the people that were eight and oh, or, you know, 10 and right. oh, they, <laughs> right. they missed the tournament, but nobody else, you know, mm -hmm. half your teams are losing. So mm -hmm. if you're going to make it fun because you're winning, half your teams aren't having fun now. So let's just not worry about that. And let's focus on, having fun playing. So what we did instead then is our leagues are usually four, four or five weeks long, no tournament, no standings. We keep track of the records because that helps us schedule and, and do the appropriate yeah. competition, but that's not public. That's not posted. And then we do offer three, one day, three on three tournaments during the year. So that those teams that want to be more competitive and win something, mm -hmm. they have they have that opportunity. Gotcha. So you, so you have that as like its own thing, the, the tournament. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that a one day tournament or a multi-day tournament? Yeah, we don't do outdoor multi-day tournaments. We do just one day. Um, and, and those are really fun to do. They're, they're a little more intense. You, mm -hmm. you know, obviously people get a little bit more amped up about it, but it might run from nine o'clock to four o'clock. Mm -hmm. And we've made anywhere on a small tournament, you might make $3,000 to $10,000 running a, a one day event. That's amazing. That's yeah. really cool. And I think about the psychology too, with, with the kids, if there's like a standings, like, and there's, you know, they can rank the teams and they can see that they're in the lower half. I could see how those kids, if it's that competitive, how they won't want to do it the next year. Mm -hmm. And then that affects y'all's business. Mm -hmm. And then, then it's only for kids that are, you know, love winning and, you know, want to be really competitive, which not every kid is like that. You guys are reaching the mass, which 
mm-hmm. you know, which is really smart. And I guess at this point, you know, you guys are running multiple leagues every single year. What is, if you don't mind sharing, like what is your role in the business and, and your husband's role? Are you guys kind of working on the same thing or are y'all doing different things? Uh, like? Well, we overlap a little bit, but we each have our strengths and we each have our things that we like to do or don't like to do. So he mm-hmm. is the scheduler um, and we have a really good way of scheduling now we don't just put it into a machine that spits it all out Mm -hmm. like we were just saying those teams that never win we don't have that happen we look at scores and we figure out who do these teams need to play so that they can get a win and Mm -hmm. um, our goal is on that fourth week of the league the scores are as about as close as they've been because we're finding the right teams for everybody to play. They might not be playing their grade level. Right. Even. So, so he is the, the genius scheduler. He puts a lot of pride into that. Um, and then let's see. And he is the one that's going to pack up all of the supplies that have to go to each league. Cause you've got a couple of bins of, of things and he'll print the score sheets and everything that needs to go he gets that set up for the the people that pick it up to run the league. I'm more of the person that is innovative and tries to think of what else should we try? Um, he, he would still be collecting the the checks by mail. If it was up to him, he doesn't mm-hmm. like to change how we do things. So yeah. I, I might be the one that's doing more of the social media or trying different marketing, um, things like that. Mm-hmm. What am I missing with that? Uh, really not, not much. I know. So you said you guys brought on somebody else Mm -hmm. is what, what is their role? Well, he was an interesting person to bring in because he trains kids. Um, he, he runs camps. He actually was working with the Timberwolves and running their, their youth Academy and then left and came to work with us. So he loves to run our camps. He's the the person that's super connected in the community. He knows every basketball person in the state. He remembers every kid's name. So he's the one that will talk to um, the different groups we might work with. So when we run a league, we're often partnering with a a group that might be fundraising and we're putting money back into their program. He builds a lot of those relationships with the the basketball people. Um, And then um, just he's at a lot of our sites because kids love to see him and Mm -hmm. and he remembers all their names. So he's very much out in the the leagues and in the community and building those relationships. Right. That sounds like a perfect person to have (laughs) because that's like automatic marketing. Anytime he's around anyone, that's, Mm -hmm. that's great. And when you think about, we'll kind of take a couple steps forward now. So like, present day you're you're running that and you're also helping a lot of business owners you know start this type of business um and you're not just doing it with basketball right you have other people and other sports that have reached out to you that you've worked with correct yeah that wasn't intentional it just happened like I'm in Minnesota and there's a collegiate football coach who had seen what we were doing with three-on-three basketball and he was like I want to do this with football. So we got on a, on a call and he's like, well, your system work for football. I'm like, I don't honestly know. Like I, I it, it works for us. Like I can't promise right. it is, but let's just see what happens. And um, so he's a couple years into his um, football program, three on three football program. And it's going really well. It's, I mean, I think that'd be really fun for kids. How many football players don't get to ever be the quarterback or the receiver, right. that's awesome. you know, and now they're, they're getting to do that. So that's working for him too. And, you know, just a lot of the principles and the philosophy behind what we're doing and the system mm-hmm. will work for other sports as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny. Cause when I was, I think I was six years old, long time ago, uh, I played in my first ever three on three soccer tournament and it was with a company called three on three live. I don't know if they're still around, but I remember those were one day tournaments and I just, I fell in love with that. Cause it was like, I got the ball so much more than I normally would in a game. Mm-hmm. And it was all just, it's so much one-on-one because on that smaller field. And I did that, I think till I was 12 or 13. And that was probably my most fun memories of playing soccer. Like I love doing that way more than anything I did in club soccer or high school soccer. And I saw how big it was back then. 
and I'm assuming it's probably a lot bigger now in soccer. And when you think, and I'm going to try to put you on the spot here, but when you think about since you started helping, you know, business owners with their three on three leagues, like what is the kind of the story that stands out the most of a, a successful student that you've had that has joined your program, that's gotten your help, that you've seen, they've just gotten amazing results. Could you kind of describe one, just one example? One, okay, two popped to my mind. Um, I kind of already alluded to John though and what he's done, so I won't talk about him. Um, but Nick, who I know is one of your yeah. clients too. So he, um, he's, he's doing really well with this too. He, he already has a basketball training program right. and he, he modified this to work for him. Like when we're doing this, we're having 150 teams, 180 teams at some of our leagues, They're, they get really, really big. It's huge. He's, yeah. But he's tailored this for his niche, for his um, you know, his people. And he's running like on a Wednesday night, a girl, middle school girls, three on three league. And it's a couple hours a night and he fills it. And it, he, he's just targeting that group. And then Thursday night might be boys. And I've kind of been snooping on his page and I see he's selling out his leagues and stuff. And that's, you know, it's an addition to what he's already doing. Now, right. He didn't take it on as a focus of his business. Like we are, he's just adding it to something that he's already doing. And offering his current people something new and different and he's doing really well really well with that too yeah yeah and i'm seeing i'm seeing this becoming a a really big piece of the puzzle now with a lot of the people that we work with is like they already have an audience they already have kids that they're training and one of the things that those kids lack is like yeah they have the training but they want to play more mm -hmm. and so the easiest thing to do and if you have a business that's tr focused on training is have this extra league set up uh, for your clients so they can just naturally come into this league and, and now play more. And then it's, I think with the marketing too, it's, it's great if you have that base because then you can just go to the parents and say, Hey, like we want your whole team to come out. <laughs> and then now you have, you know, 12 right. kids out there and you have three different, three or four different teams. Where do you see that going? Like, do you, do you see, that industry just getting bigger and bigger over the next, you know, 10 plus years, as far as, you know, kids that play club sports and they're, they're trying to, you know, play more and get more training, get more uh, games in like, do you see that just continuing to get bigger over the next decade? I, I do. Um, I mean, I just look at the, the path of our business and how it just keeps doing this. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, and, and we went through this as a family, we had three kids that played high level sports where we were doing them year round and you travel and you got the hotels and, mm. you know, you got three kids going different directions. And we did the color coded calendar, like who's taking which kid to which practice <laughs> that we lived that. Right. And I think that's a, it's a huge burden on families time, the time commitment. Mm -hmm. Like it's a, it's a lot for a parent to do that for their kids and it's expensive. It's really expensive. And so I think what we're, what we're offering to people in, in a smaller sided sport, lower commitment, they're not having practices. They're not traveling out of town. There is no hotels. There's no meals you have to purchase. You just come all your kids, all, if you've got three basketball playing kids, they all come to the same gym. You get to watch all three of them. We don't charge admission fees. So there is really nothing in our community that parents can sign their kid up for basketball and get what they get in our program. And they don't have to be elite high level players. They can be soccer might be their main sport, but they like basketball and they can go and play basketball. And I think that this, there's so many things about this, but parents love watching those small sided sports so much more. Like you said, you loved playing it. I bet your parents loved what you were in all the action. Right. And yeah. It, sometimes kids are on a basketball team and their, their role is to set a pick and they might get one shot a game. And that's what they, you know, not in three on three, that doesn't happen. So parents love it. It works in busy schedules. It's affordable. It's a low commitment. So I just see this being something that's more fun for families to have their kids do whatever sport it might mm -hmm. be. Cool. So I think it's going to grow. That's what I think. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> 
no, you know, I, I'd love all of those, those benefits. Cause when, when kids are more active in, in, you know, getting the ball more, taking more chances, they, they become more confident and they like the sport more, but right after they start, you know, what do you think is going to be one of their bigger challenges in this specific business? Well, and the initial one is going to be getting that first league up off the ground. And that that's a big hurdle to make that happen. Um, so once you get that first league off the ground, then I think your, your big thing is you got to make sure you do that first one. Well, Yeah. You know, if, if you, if you are lucky enough to get that first league and you've got 50 teams there and you are not prepared and you do a crappy job of it, right. everything it. You just did, they're not coming back. You know, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. So you have to make sure that that first league, you are prepared, you know, the, the, the challenges or the, the weird things that might happen. Like, how do you solve it? If a team doesn't show up, um, mm -hmm. you know, what are you going to do? If people are complaining about refs, what are you going to do? If there's an injury, like you have to pre be really prepared for everything so that when that league ends, that's your next big, biggest marketing tool is everyone just loved it so much. And they want to know what's next. Mm -hmm. So I think that's your biggest challenge out of the gate is doing that first one. Well, Mm -hmm. And then after that, I think it becomes easier. That part of it becomes easier. And then it becomes more of developing that system so that you're efficient and that you can scale what you're doing. Um, and going through it that first time, you'll learn so much about what you need to, to have in place to scale. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's really what you provide now, right? For business owners, you have a step-by-step -step course mm -hmm. and program that is world class. It's designed for people that want to start this type of business. And I know at this point, you talk to people that are interested in the program, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And, and one thing that we'll do is we'll, we'll drop, there's going to be a link under this interview. So people can, if they're interested in talking to you, they can uh, click on that and get on a call with you. And then tell us just kind of briefly about the webinar that you have, because I know you, you have a webinar that mm -hmm. is really good. I've gone through it, but it's probably easier if you talk about it. Um, just briefly tell everyone what your webinar is and, and what's the intent of it. Sure. So the webinar, it's about 90 minutes and I give a little bit of background mm -hmm. on how we got started, how we're doing, what we're doing in Minnesota. And, um, anyone who's curious, if you want to see what we're doing, our business is called Midwest three on three.com. So you can go check that out and, and see what we're doing. Then in the webinar, I go through the seven steps that you need to go through in order to make this three on three league happen. So we go through all that training on those seven steps. And then I also explain what my program is that people can enroll in to get even more support beyond the webinar. If you're looking for more help. Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. And I'm going to put you on the spot. This is my last question. Uh, so let's say that back in the 90s. So what was the exact year you guys started the business? 1997. Cool. 97. So let's say in 1997, the internet was the way it is right now. And I know it wasn't back then, but <laughs> let's say you saw an interview with someone who'd been in the business for 20 years and they're now teaching people how to do start a you know, three on three league business. Um, how beneficial do you think that would have been for you at the very beginning when you started that business? Well, I told you it took us how many years, six, seven, eight years, whatever, until we started running more than one league. So it would have you know, if our intent was to make this a business out of the gate, we would have saved what, five or seven years right there with right. learning how to do more than one league a year. Right. Um, so shave off seven years. Um, and just, you know, we've made mistakes. We've, you know, we've had to try different things and learn different things. And what if you could skip some of those mistakes? What if you could not make a shirt ordering error that costs you $500? Like, whoops, mm -hmm. you know, or, or spending money on something that's not going to work with advertising or buying supplies that you actually don't need. Yep. Um, like just so many things that we got to fumble our way through. Um, 
sometimes cried about it. <laughs> um, I you know, can imagine. <laughs> you skip some of those things, you know, and then just have the confidence that, you know, when you show up at your league, that you are prepared, that you didn't oh forget something. Um, I forgot to do something just that, that anxiety of mm -hmm. there were many nights where I would not sleep because you just keep going through everything. Like, did I do everything I needed to do? And I just wanted to, I know everything that you need to do now. So if you want to run a league and you don't know everything, you know, I, I've got that for you. So you can mm. sleep at night and right. know working on the right thing at the right time. Yeah. And to me, cause I, I've thought very cl clearly about this with like programs that I've invested into and I've invested into a lot of stuff over the past, especially seven years. Um, and one thing I always think about when I make that type of decision is, is this going to help me save time? And is this going to ultimately help me make more money? Mm -hmm. Like, I think anyone who thinks about investing into something, if, if, if those answers are yes, like if I'm going to save a lot of time, then to me, that's, that's almost the same as like, well, if it's going to take me five years to do something like, and I could do it in six months it's like i'm saving four and a half years of time which equates to a lot of money yes, right uh, yeah. and and that's where like having a you know a coach and a proven system to follow it's so important and it's important to not just like do it but to execute on the information which i know is like that's probably the most important part about your business is like you have the steps and as long as people execute that's where like the results are going to come. And I know you've, you've worked with a lot of people at this point, like, and I know you're branching out into, to more sports. Um, and I'm really excited about what you're doing. Cause I, I feel like having these leagues set up in different cities, it makes a really big impact on the community and, and the kids love it and the parents love it. And, and I think it's a really cool thing. And then, is there anything else that you want to try to add before, before we leave? You know, no, I think we talked about a lot of good things. I just want people to know that right now, this is my passion is to share. Um, it's the teacher in me, I think, just to mm -hmm. share the success that we're having and what we have learned and, and support people. And as I'm working with people and finding out the things that are roadblocks to them, yep. I'm trying to build in other things to help those specific roadblocks. So I've had people that they're, they're moving along and then they get stuck because they, they don't have a website and then they sit there for three months because they don't have a website. So I'm, I'm pulling in some different things to help them in two days. Now you've got a website because I've, I've found this for you. So, um, and I'm going to keep doing that. That's just my passion is, you know, I've got a few people that are a couple of years into this. Mm -hmm. I just met with them a couple of them right before I talked to you. I'm just like, what are your, what are your roadblocks right now? You're two years into this. What are your problems? And what do you need from me to help you keep going over that next hurdle? And that's, that's what I'm, I'm doing. I'm trying to find ways to help other people do what we're doing. Cause I think it's so great for kids. It's been a great business for our family. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's been a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm here to help people. That's awesome. That's awesome. And yeah, what we'll do is right below the video, any coach who's watching this, you guys can click on, uh, the webinar link, or there's a contact form, right. That you have where people can fill it out and talk to you one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Awesome. So we will get that right below this video. Thank you so much for coming on this interview. Thanks for having me. It's a lot and, of fun. Uh, I know this is going to help a lot of people. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. All right, coaches. I hope you really enjoyed that interview with Christy. I know she shared so many tips, so many nuggets on how to get started um, growing the business and her story. So if you want to take advantage of her free webinar, go right below this video. You can click and put in your email. Go watch the free webinar she has. It's awesome. Um, and if you want to talk with her one-on-one -on -one over the phone, I also have a link right there, right below the webinar link. You can click on that, uh, fill out the form, chat with her. Um, she's awesome. I really trust her. Um, we've had coaches at this point that I work with that have started working with Christy and they've seen awesome results. So go ahead, watch the webinar or get in contact with her. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.